Oh, it's really beautiful here. Look at that intense light. What is that? Wreck of the Parsifal. A once proud engine drifts here, riven by a destructive growth of fungus. Holy shit. That is extraordinary looking. My first thought was guests. But I don't think that is the guests. Fungus. Guests aren't fungus, are they? Approaching the Parsifal. The engine drifts unhappily through the sky. Some unholiness keeps the front of the engine tethered to the rest, despite the eruptions of corpse-white fungus that divides the train. The locomotive's side is scored with black scars. The name Parsifal can be made out in brass letters on its side. The first engine through the avid horizon, a navigator whispers. London's pride once. Captain by Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe. The engine was to chart new horizons beyond Albion. Never came back. The first engine through the Avid Horizon? It was the first one to the skies. Um. Yeah, let's board. What happened to the first engine in the high wilderness? Its doors are sealed, its lights dim. It drifts in the currents mangled by fungal extrusions. Bolt cutters and pry bars are required to break the outer door. Its locking mechanism is antiquated and slickened with an oily substance. You wrench the door open and are immediately greeted with a cloud of yellowing spores. Your vision blurs just as your navigator torches them, igniting the air with burning fungus. A few gas lights flicker on the walls. The scratchy sounds of a gramophone can be heard. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. Are those the lyrics from the gramophone? Okay, uh, two things I want to mention. First, this is something I've been seeing a lot, and I don't think I've mentioned it before. We've had a lot of encounters with spores. Lots of different types of fungus all over the place. And, like, I don't know how much humans need to worry about spores being inhaled, but like, there's been lots of talk of all sorts of different spores just like floating through the air thick. Like, I mean, the entirety of Hybris was like that. There's spores everywhere, and everybody's just breathing that stuff in, right? I mean, they're not wearing helmets or anything. So, is that safe? I mean, there's so many different types of funguses, some of them very, very dangerous. I mean, Christ, there's... <laughs> One type of fungus takes over your brain and makes you drive incautiously so that they can try to gain information on whatever the hell they want, how a son died at the well, whatever else they want in Albion. Like, I would wear a gas mask 24-7 if I could. Of course, I don't think they have gas masks. <laughs> but they have sky suits. I mean, they must have some sort of oxygen system in a sky suit. Right? I don't... I actually don't know. Would they? What does the sky suit protect you against? Cold? Lack of oxygen? Huh. Anyway. Oh, right. The other thing. How is there a gramophone here? Why are there gas lights? How is there a person here? I don't know how long it's been since the Avid Horizon was opened, but obviously quite a while. I mean, look at how much everything has been set up. There was there was absolutely no human, you know, buildings, uh, human occupation, whatever, at all before we came to the skies. I don't think, anyway. So all of this was built after coming here, so it's been a while. I don't like that image being blood. What happened? Spores drift through broken carriages like dying fireflies. Recruitment posters bearing Her Renewed Majesty's face molder on the walls. Music, scratchy but distinct, echoes through the empty carriages. A great wall of pulsing fungus separates the back of the engine from the front. Investigate the armory or the captain's cabin or just attempt to breach the fungus. Mm, brute force doesn't seem like the way to go yet. Let's enter the captain's cabin. 
In the first designs for London's engines, the captain always roomed towards the back of the train for their protection. That's smart. Plush seats surround a decaying paper map placed on a mahogany table. Drinks, some floating with mildew, have been poured in glasses around the table. Maps hang from sprouting fronds like peeling wallpaper. Spores float gently through the room. Logbooks lie scattered about the table. None date from after 1897. The engine's destination was to be Trader's Wood. The last entry regards a stop at Hybris, which they named High Brazil. Something was brought on board. The captain's bunk has collapsed in a pile of rotten wood and infected bedsheets wet with fungal growths. Man, this is really going in a sci-fi horror direction. I love this. Something was brought on board. <laughs> in the last entry, the last stop was at Hybris, where there's all sorts of weird funguses. Fungi. Uh, last date was from 1897. It's 1906. So it's it's been about 20 years since we came to the skies. You've gained one terror. And this is the song continuing, I think. Here comes the grenadiers, my boys, who know no doubts or fears. Then sing Tow Row Row Row, the British grenadiers? I don't know if that's Tow Row or Tow Row. Uh, Alright, we're back out here. So, yeah, nothing more we can do in the captain's cabin. Nope. Oh. The lyrics continue. That makes sense. And I gained more terror because I looked at all this terrible stuff again. Who didst brood upon the chaos dark and rude, and bid its angry tumult cease, and give for wild confusion peace? O oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. Investigate the armory. An explorer engine like the Parzival would have been stocked for all eventualities. The solid iron walls of the armory are stained and rotted with sporing bodies. Lockers hang open, revealing decaying and antiquated sky suits. The old design with thermal chest plates, a thermal chest plate and brass buttons for fastenings. Several of your crew coo appreciatively, but back away when a prodding of one suit reveals a fruiting colony of golden black mushrooms has sprouted within. Amongst the outdated and unused weaponry, you uncover a trove of novels. Fanciful stuff, but all concerned with the possibilities of space travel and the interaction between modern man and the alien. <laughs> Interactions between modern man and aliens. Fanciful, ridiculous stuff. Anyway, when am I going to meet that son that's in Albion? When Britain first Heaven's Command arose from out the Azure Main, this was the charter of the land and guardian angels sang this strain. Golden black mushrooms. We were given gold mushrooms by Madame Lumiere. Right? They said that, like, Tower of Fungus, where everything originated from at Hybris, seemed to not like them. Is this a golden black? Are these golden black mushrooms the same thing? Ah, uh, I guess let's try to breach the fungus. 49% chance of success. Shivering spasms of festering fungus separate the front of the train from the rest. The only way forward is through. Ah, failure. Sabers serve to hack away the plump, bulging intrusions. It peels away like flesh carved from a roasted pig. The smell is considerably worse, however. The work is slow going. These twitching sheaths of fungus are of enormous size and depth. An American stoker remembers the redwood trees of his youth. Eventually, enough of a path is clear to allow you to progress. It's a tight squeeze between the walls of livid flesh, allowing you to see the bulges within up close. Bulges the same shape and size as you. And then you are through. <laughs> Alright, so the people are integrated into the fungus, which is probably what happened to all the people at Hybris. And I think that uh, the person, was it the person running Hybris or the mayor or something? I think it was the mayor of Hybris. Didn't they seem not too worried about everything? I, like, I got the feeling that they had some sort of a plan 
They weren't worried about their future. Maybe they wanted to become part of the fungus to live forever. So even though we failed, it just means that we gained terror, I think. It's like a partial failure. The front of the engine is even more infected with sprouting mushrooms and sporing fungal growths. The engine room lies ahead, seemingly the source of the persistent movement. Before that, however, is a haze of spores rendering the corridor ahead entirely noxious. Ooh, that's... oh, it's getting harder and harder. 37% chance. Let's explore the crew cabins. In locomotives as old as this, the crew were always assigned bunks near the engine room. That also makes some sense. So if something happens, you can get people to their station as quick as possible to run the thing. The sounds of the gramophone are louder here. Battered metal and tormented wood paneling comprise the confines in which the crew dwelled. Chubby toadstools round as pastries dot the cramped bunk beds. Mementos of home are scattered about the fruiting debris. Slim volumes of Arnold and Blake, vials of honey, and engravings of simple domestic scenes can be found under, under every bunk. You also uncover a little tally chart on a folded up bit of paper. It seems the crew were organizing a whip round for the commander's retirement present. They'd settled on a plot of land on Port Prosper. When Britain first at Heaven's command arose from out the... Oh, this is the same one we saw last time. Wait, so it's repeating? Is the record, like, skipping? Traverse the sporing carriage. Fruiting sacks send clouds of vitriolic orange into the air. Passing through will be hazardous to the health. The engine room is just beyond. Oh, heck yeah. You go alone. Your crew disappear behind you, lost in a haze of orange and gold. Above, sacks of sporing fungus encrusted to the metalwork begin to erupt. Showers of spore and viscous liquids render the terrain still more hazardous. You feel a peculiar sensation. Your hands tingle as though wishing to reach out, to touch the fungus, as though for one more drink. You increase your speed. At last, you leap over a final hissing sack of fungal eggs and find yourself before the engine room door. We wish her neither wit nor wealth, nor yet a rope to hang herself. With a fla la 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 la. Your hands tingle as though wishing to reach out to touch the fungus as though for one more drink. Hmm. Yeah, so if it has a draw on people, then yeah, maybe it drew the people in Hybris to it. It had them enthralled. The engine room is before you. Light and music spill from under the door, queasy and persistent. Let's enter. The thick steel door is scored with bullet holes and is held in place by tendrils of ropey white fungus. As you approach, you notice the damage done to the walls, riddled with bullets, old stains on the carpet. An attack was mounted on the engine room. You can hear music loud and clear from inside. An eerie green light pours through the hinges like flood water. You push open the door. The engine room is cold as a sunless sky. Your breath hangs in long chains before you. The boiler is off. The infernal gramophone sits atop the boiler. The music is no better for being closer to it. Before you lies a... Dance? I think it's supposed to be dense. A dense macabre of fungus and corpses, hand in frond. On the wall, suspended by fungus, is a body in a captain's uniform. Actually, maybe... maybe... Dance is just a word I'm not familiar with. Oh yeah, dance macabre, I don't know if, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, it's French, uh, is a phrase that means dance of death. So before you lies a dance of death, of fungus and corpses hand in fronts, so like, you know, a tangle of bodies and fungus and all that stuff. Investigate the engine room, or examine the captain's corpse. Percy Blythe. Let's investigate the engine room, what happened here? The corpses bear bullet wounds. 
They're unmarred by fungus, decaying in peace. Amongst the rank insignia, you spot a first officer, a chief engineer, and a conductor. All died violent deaths. There are far too few to amount to the full crew. <laughs> the rest are in the fungus, I'm sure, back there. The boiler, a battered, antiquated, wheezing contraption, stands silent and broken. Strips of iron hang in front of it as though it had suffered an explosion. Inside, you find fungus amidst the ashes, clumps and clusters of tendrils that sprout from the charcoal. When burnt, the spores would have infected the whole engine. Oh, is that what happened then? It was burnt and it got in the entire engine? Center victorious, happy, and glorious long terrain over us. So the song is starting over again, I think. Examine the captain's corpse. Here lies all that remains of Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe. The corpse of the finest officer of his generation hangs from the wall, suspended by chains of pale fronds. His skin is sallow, and there are strands of golden fungus across his cheek, as though a sun sits beneath the skin. His eyes open. Percy Blythe looks down on you. Blue fruiting heads speckle his beard like hanging seaweed. Next to him, the gramophone crackles out its dreary anthems of years past. His mouth opens too wide as he speaks. His jaw cracks. Ugh. Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe lives. I don't know if this is life. Suspended from chains of fungus, Percy Blythe begins to stir, improbably alive. He fixes his gold-flecked eyes on you as his mouth begins to move as though wanting to speak. Listen to them. Somehow he's alive. He groans. His mouth opens impossibly wide and a cloud of yellow spores emerge. I am all that's left. An oily liquid begins to drip from his left eye. I am a child of the Grave Garden. The voice alters, becoming more clipped, more static, like that of the voices on the gramophone. I am Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe. I am the captain of the Parsifal. My task, my task was to explore the wilderness and return home with new discoveries. He groans as though weeping. I am all that remains. I want to go home. Like, I'm picturing not having any emotion in the voice when they say this, because it says uh, it's more s clipped static, like that of the voices on the gramophone. So I'm imagining, like, it sounds like the fungus is making them speak. Like, it sounds like it's a mix of the fungus just using Percy Blythe's body and and lungs and mouth and vocal cords and their memories to try to talk. It's like a mix of that and also also maybe some of Percy Blythe being alive, maybe. Who didst brood upon the chaos dark and rude, but its angry tumult cease and give for wild confusion peace. I've already seen that, but it was nice to read again. The lieutenant commander of the Parzival has survived whatever befell his engine. He's the key to understanding whatever occurred here. Uh. Ask him what happened here. How did the Parsifal end up in this condition? We met the children on the Hybris. We sought to know each other. Wanted to go to the wood. Wanted to see what was kept from us. Percy is drooling as he speaks. The gramophone clicks as yet another patriotic dirge begins to play. Percy Blythe struggles in his bonds, pulling himself up to stand a little straighter. We made contact on Hybris. The fungus was so bright, so beautiful. His eyes shine gold. I brought it aboard. God forgive me. I wanted the crew to see, to know. Oil leaks from those hollow eyes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Some came willing. Others refused to join us. We had to... He breaks off into silence, staring away into the middle distance. 
I think they're talking about that the the source, the pillar of fungus on Hybris. I don't know what the children are, though. I don't know if that's the pillar or if... Are there some sort of childlike fungus entities on Hybris? God, I'm scared. We're going to go back to Hybris soon-ish. And I don't think I'm going to like what I'm going to find. Also, what would happen if I went back to Hybris and continued that whole quest line without finding this? Because that would be totally possible. This this gives me so much context for what's happening there. So yeah, the children. The children of the fungus or something. And uh, what I'm getting from this, as far as what happens, uh, what happened, like they found the fungus, it was bright, it was beautiful, so I think it had that effect that it had on us, where it was pulling us in, making us want to uh, touch it, become one with it. It did that to them. That's why they brought it aboard, God forgive me, I wanted the crew to see to know. And then they say, um, some came willing, others refused to join us. We had to. That must be all the people that were shot. Quite a few of the crew wanted to join it, become one with it, because they were pulled in so hard by it and found it beautiful. They're probably the ones that were actually integrated into the fungus, the ones that we were, were like bulging inside of the fungus as we went by them. And then, yeah, the other ones, the bodies that were shot, those aren't part of it, right? Didn't it even say they were like decaying gently? It's like they hadn't been touched. Those were the ones that didn't want to come with. Some talk of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander and such great names as these. But of all the world's great heroes, there's none that can compare with a tow row 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 to the British Grenadiers. Compare Grenadier. Maybe with a different accent, these would rhyme a little bit more. What happened to him? How can he be alive? Percy Blythe launches into a long, meandering, slurred story of children and gardens, of a cruel king who needed but did not love his subjects, despite their love for him, of knowledge denied and growth checked, of tyranny and freedom, of grief and betrayal and longing. The music bursts into sudden life. Percy jerks and fixes you with an infected eye. I was stupid. I thought we would be welcome here. And we were. We were welcomed. We were loved. The children. The verdants. They wanted us. He begins to sob. It's a sad, squelching sound. The children. The verdants. The verdants. What exactly is the verdants? It just ran out to me. It feels like a... Some sort of a vague gesture at the idea of life growing much faster and stronger than it should. Like at the nature reserve and the fertilizer that they made. The peacock winds, verdant seeds, all those things. But is it also a specific thing? The children, the verdants? It's, I mean, it's even capitalized. The verdants. They wanted us. Console him or keep your distance. <laughs> Console him. Something of the man remains. You approach gingerly, fishing for a handkerchief in your pocket. Reaching up, you begin to dab at the oily tears that score at the lieutenant commander's face. Beneath the grime, you can see Percy's flesh is remarkably well preserved, save for the vibrant tendrils of golden fungus running beneath the skin. Thank you, he whispers. Here's a health unto her majesty with a fa-la-la-la-la confusion to her enemies. Yeah, what are these garbage songs? What does he want now? Can he even go home? Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe lets out a low moan and slumps forward. The chains of fungus adjust to accommodate this despair. Home, he slurs. Like a man drunk demanding another drink. On Hybris. Mother spored us there. She set out her children across the stars to learn. The traitors would. We were forbidden from entering there, but now its king is dead. But this craft failed before we could arrive. The body jerks as though shocked. 
Percy's face rises to face you. London, he rasps. London. Okay, a couple things happening here. Um, on Hybris, Mother Sport us there. They tried to, yeah, so they're trying to get to Hybris, but the craft failed before they could get there. So that's the fungus talking, right? That's the fungus that wants to go back to where Mother Sport them. And then the body jerks as though shocked. That's Percy regaining control for just a little bit. And that's when they say London. They want to go actually home. I'm definitely not taking them back to Hybris. Um, but the other thing is th this. So they're talking about Mother. She set out her children across the stars to learn. That is the same type of spore that's gone inside of the incautious driver's head. Right? It wants to learn. It wanted us to see Old Tom's Well. Or, I mean, it didn't want us to see. It didn't care. It wanted us to take it to Old Tom's Well so it could see it's there to gather information. Because after we did that, and we went back to the nature reserve, and there was some sort of a pillar of fungus that the incautious driver went to. Which, now that I think about it, are there multiple mothers? Why did we go to the nature reserve and not hybris? Are there multiple pillars of fungus? Um, anyway. Yeah, uh, the unconscious driver said that it's not its not done. It wants to see more. I think we needed to go find some other spores in Albion. Some other ones that were sent out to find information, but they kind of went astray and uh, they want to stay out there, but we need to recall them. Mother wants all of their kids back, I guess. So this is all the same sort of the same sort of fungus. Can the Parsifal still fly? The answer is almost certainly no, but there's no harm in asking. No, the lieutenant commander hisses, his eyes rolling in his head. Sabotage, mutiny, ignorance, no fuel. The children too greedy, spread too fast. Like fire, the engine is broken crew all gone. I am alone. His head lolls as though his neck were broken. Oh, I thought, hmm, okay, yeah, that makes more sense. I was thinking that the spores were placed inside of the engine and spread throughout the whole thing, and that's what ruined it. And that was on purpose, to spread the spores to the people that didn't want to join? But no. It did also say that the engine looked like it was exploded, it was blown up, it was. That was the mutiny, sabotage. The children wanted the, the ship to continue working because they needed it to get to Hybris. Decide his fate. This cannot continue. Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe, decorated hero of London's forces, first captain through the avid horizon, gazes at you, slack-jawed and unseeing. Please, he rasps. Take me home, or finish this. He twitches. We just wanted to know what was kept from us and traitors would. Why did our king not love his children? So the he twitches part, I think it's after that that the fungus takes over again, right? Take me home or finish this. We, the fungus, wanted to know what was kept from us in traitors would. Why did our king not love his children? Right, before we saw something about, like, a king who, um, a king who did not love but needed his subjects. And there was supposed to be a king buried in the regent's grave, which is actually close to this. So that king has some connection to the mother and the children and the fungus? Blythe hangs listless in front of you, apparently exhausted. His head lulls and his gaze is dull. What is to be done? I could burn it all down. No one need ever know what happened here. It might be mercy. Take Percy to Hybris. Return him to Mother. Return Percy to London. Bring him home. Or take Percy to Traitor's Wood. Let him complete his last mission. 
Well, I know what the actual Percy Blythe wants us to do. Take them to London, although I have to wonder, how are we going to take them anywhere? Aren't they mounted, kept in place, and kept alive by the fungus? So, I mean, if we cut all the fungus, isn't it going to die, and isn't aren't they going to die? Maybe they mean return my body to London. I don't know. I don't want to take a living bit of the fungus with me. Certainly not. Jesus Christ, is it dangerous? The really interesting one to me... I mean, I'm probably not going to do it, but the one that's surprising and I didn't expect is take them to Traitorswood. Let him complete his last mission. Right, that was their destination, Traitorswood. God, I'm so curious. I'm really curious about this one. Somehow, like, something about that feels poetic, doesn't it? That was their destination. We saw it in the logbook. Last stop was at Hypers, and their destination was Traitorswood. But didn't they want to go there because the spores, the fungus, was trying to gather information? Or to figure out why the king didn't love them or something? They were trying to see the king, so is that even something that Percy actually wants us to do? But the fungus said it wanted to go to Mother. But does it also want to go to Traitorswood? I don't entirely understand. But I'm really curious about that one. But it's not what Percy, the actual Percy, wants. We know the actual Percy wants to go back to London. So, I'm going to do that. The remnant of Percy Blythe does not appear to register your response. His head bobs with the tilting of the engine. You cup his head gently to avoid plunging your hand through the soft, rotten flesh of his neck. The chains of fungus quiver as you set to freeing him. His hand reaches for yours, and his gold-flecked eyes meet yours. An end. Please, he rasps. London. I want... Remember as I was. They want to be remembered as they were. They can't live without the fungus. I mean, Christ, the soft, rotten, rotten flesh of his neck. Spare him, bring him home alive. Perhaps he might yet be saved. No. An end. And they want to be remembered as they were, which means bring home his corpse. A small spatter of red and a longer drip of black follows. The corpse sinks to the floor as though abandoned by the fungus. His body has left a deep impression in the yellow mushroom that covers the wall. You bear the fallen captain of the Parsifal back to your engine, where his corpse is covered with an old flag. His last voyage is almost at an end. Uh, I press the onwards button. Is some, something happening? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, that was weird. The game froze for like five seconds, and then when I tried to click, it registered those clicks after the five seconds and launched a bunch of missiles. Anyway, that awkwardness aside, that, that was a wonderful and really powerful story. Wow. God, I feel so... I feel so bad. For the captain. And now I know so much more about... Well, I mean, it links a lot... I, like... This is so cool. Not only is it just an interesting story just on its own, even if you didn't consider any sort of, like, context of how this plays into other things around it. Like, just that encounters this, like, wonderful sci-fi horror thing. That's super, super cool, and I love it on its own. But also how well they've woven it through all these other threads. So this is tied to the Trader's Wood and the king that's buried there or in the region's grave over here. Some sort of a king, and there's like children in the forest at Hybris. That's tied to that. And the pillar of, pillar of fungus mother 
at Hybris. There's also a pillar at the Nature Reserve, I think. And it's the same sort of fungus that's inside of the incautious driver's head. Like, it ties all that stuff together. It's not just like some totally separate little thing. It's like, it's part of a, a whole very large story. Of these extraordinary and disturbing organisms that have taken over people. That was amazing. Well, let's keep going in and see if we can get to the region's grave. Looks like this might loop all the way around, kind of spiraling into the center. It's a... oh. Well, that went well. Loot the hold. Faintly luminescent cage. Vision of the heavens. I was going to say... This... Gently rotating exploded fungus train thing. That wasn't a very poetic way to put it, but it really is such a powerful eye-catching image watching it just slowly rotate amongst all this starlight and this huge shaft of light coming from somewhere. Yeah, these wispy things that you need the, like, canning tools to get. And it gives you supplies. Somebody told me what these are, because I couldn't figure it out. They just look like, you know, like wispy ghosts or something. Some sort of spectral energy. And somehow they give you supplies, so they're actually a food source. Uh, but somebody told me that they're, uh... I forgot the first name. Something eel. or some sort of a type of eel. And now that I know that, I can sort of see it. Some sort of a weird, wispy space eel? Explore the captain's cabin. Salons do gossip. Oh, you have a blunderbuss style thing. I need to keep away from you. Where'd you go? Wow, this is like a Marauder base, I think. Seems like it. Scavenger for parts, gain whole. Strip it for materials and max hole. Nice. Go 
carefully marauders have made an encampment here in the recesses of the wood. The first part of it really looks Finnish. Heikkinen. It's really common for Finnish last names to end in Nen. Heikkinen. <laughs> I can't dock here, right? Oh, I love that little squeak. What I want now, actually, is supplies. That's the thing I'm lowest on. Uh, explore the captain's cabin, so long as to gossip, yes. Yeah, these marauders are actually pretty helpful, though. Because they're pretty easy to kill, given how good my ship is right now. And they kind of serve to help uh, refuel me a bit. At least they refueled my hull, anyway. I don't know if I'll find supplies on board. I don't know how often that kind of comes up. Yeah, it's usually just sovereigns and unusual items. Okay, well, I don't want to dilly-dally too much. Like, I don't think I need to explore this. Although I am curious if that's a... Ooh, is that a pass-through? Because if so, then I could just go up to the circus real quick. Hold on. And I could restock everything. Over there. Well, that name, I don't know about Finnish, but. Run home. Run home. Twenty six percent chance of success. Uh, sure. Failure. Gain 15 terror, I'm up to 65. Ooh. Your driver pulls your locomotive alongside the wreck, close enough for you to leap the gap. You squeeze with difficulty into the starlit bridge where frozen figures sit at stiff attention. The dead bridge crew. Mustaches bristle with ice crystals. You pick a careful path between them. Something at the far end of the room has caught your eye. A distressingly odored barrel. One fuel. That's cool. Lid is gingerly removed. Um, Coke is revealed black and precious. Yeah, we've seen that description before. I like it that even when you fail stuff, it doesn't give you, like, it doesn't give you a complete failure. But, right? Like, I failed it, but I still got stuff out of it. It's just that I gained a lot of terror along the way. I like that. It's more interesting than just you slipped and couldn't make it on board or something. Ooh. That took away a point in a hole. Oh, it is a pass-through. Okay. That makes it a lot easier to get back here. I mean, if you look at it, to come from New Winchester over here and then down here is much easier than having to go down to Trader's Wood and then all the way up here and then back around. Glad I checked this out. Your cavi returns, its whiskers bristled with frost. Captain, I found something. The caracle. Okay, good. This one uses veils. I could also just mourn the dead. Uh, let's mourn the dead. I could use the terror reduction. A simple ceremony. Doffed caps, a few words, a gloomy silence, but it helps. The only decency in this guise is that we bring ourselves.
Yeah, uh, I'll meet you back at the circus. Ah, safety. Look at some new arrivals, listen to their stories, reduces our terror. We desperately need that. Get a port report. Okay, let me check something. I've had some people give me some pretty convincing arguments for why attending a lot of amusements back to back to back to reduce my terror is not exploiting anything and is actually a, a just reward for all the things that I did for the circus. Because I certainly did do a lot for the circus. And uh, let me just see something. How many free tickets do I get? Five tickets. And how much does it cost? Two. Okay, you know what? That's fair. I can do it a lot because I happen to have a lot of tickets saved up. I've got 26 left over. But if I did it every time I went to get free tickets here, because you can only get free tickets every once in a while. Gotta wait a day or two or something. Um, they give you five tickets and it costs two, so you can only do it two and a half times for every time you collect free tickets. It's not like it's... I don't, it's pretty powerful, but I guess it is a pretty just reward for what I did, and it seems so extreme just because I have so much saved up. So, let's get our terror down to zero. I deserve this. Fourteen percent. Four percent. Let's leave it there. Bronzewood deals. The best deals. Worth the most. I think the Bronzewood is the most expensive thing that I've gotten prospects for before. I think there is more expensive items, but they haven't really popped up yet. Maybe they will in the other regions. You know, I do have a lot of items stored from deals, like a lot. Munitions, verdant seeds, four of that, four of that. I'm actually going to go back to New Winchester because we're so close. And just dump all that stuff off and turn in some port reports. Homestead. It's thriving. Family gathers outside to welcome you. Treat a sky story for supplies. Eat your fill. Oh, hey, I finally actually have munitions to give them for Bronzewood. Yeah, that's a fantastic deal. I think I paid 40 per crate, I want to say, and Bronzewood's worth like 200 and something. Well, depends on whether it's for a prospect or just the base sell rate at New Winchester, but it's worth a lot. With our fungal fragment. Oh, now I can get a sample of it for the researcher. Have I done this before? I don't think so. The fungus is tough. It's like cutting wood with a penknife, but it eventually gives way. Just turned in four port reports. I can affect the balance of power in their reach, I think, twice. Wait, can I not? You need five, I have four. Ah, oh, not quite. Well, everything is stored away in the bank, and I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to totally resupply, and I'm going to head back over here, and we're going to go to the Regent's Grave. <laughs>